So I'm doing a sound check test with my microphones and uh, I'm also doing a check for color and a few other things. So I'm going to serve a few purposes with this video. One is I'm going to discuss my, um, my gimbal that I use. So if I don't get myself too confused and if I don't make this too confusing, this is my gimbal. I'm standing over here because the microphone is right here. Anyhow, this is my gimbal that I use to shoot. Turn it on as it boots up. The camera comes on. Now I'm going to do that again, except this time I'm going to start the camera first. Now remember, I'm starting this uh, about a minute later, so this video and audio is going to be out of sync with that video audio, and all that's out of sync with the audio that we'll be overlaying. So keep that in mind. So now my camera's on, but the gimbal's loose. So I turn on the gimbal. Ta-da! Now, the reason I'm using the gimbal, other than to show it, is to demonstrate the recorder that I'm going to use. And of course, you can't show how you're recording unless you have another recorder, so that. Now, the oh, I'm shooting with a GoPro Hero 3 Black, and I'm operating it with my cell phone. Now, you'll notice that there is, it's stops and starts, it's not a good real-time display. There's a lag owing to the Wi-Fi signal, but if you can see, there is definitely a lag, and sometimes it just freezes up. So, that, which it's done right now, but I don't need it anymore, so I use it to frame my shot before I start shooting since a GoPro has no viewfinder. Now, I framed my shot. I tried to center all this up decently. I put some uh, lighting up, which now I have this camera. I can pan and you can see what this room looks like. Now, the audio from the main GoPro sounds like this. Check, here's some audio coming from the main camera, the Hero 3 Black. Now, we're gonna switch over to the audio from this camera. Now you're hearing the audio from this camera. Notice that when I'm quiet, you hear a little bit of ringing. That is the servo motors, and they continuously try to keep the camera balanced so that when I shake it around, it doesn't wobble, and that's how I get this steady motion, but the audio is almost unusable unless it's continuous and loud over the noise of the servo motors. Now let's go back to the microphones. If you'll notice, I've set them up just outside. Ideally, they would be closer or I'd have a lapel microphone on, but I'm, I'm not doing that today. I'm not going to worry about it. What I'm using to record is a Zoom H4N, as in Nebraska. So my H4N Zoom, I have two microphones running to it. It has built-in microphones, which sound really good, but the Zoom, in order to get it close enough, would be in the way of the camera for this instance. So what I've done is set, I've run the audio from two microphones, that signal going to the zoom, and what I've done here is selected me. On the zoom, I have selected the inputs for the microphones. If I did not have microphones on here, I would select the microphone, the built-in mic, 
inputs. So let's hit that and see what it sounds like. So these are the built-in microphones. Now I'm getting sound from these two guys here. But I'm going to switch back over. So now my sound, I can't snap with my left hand very well. Uh, my sound is coming from, my signal is coming from the microphones. The zoom is only recording that sound. Now, uh, I have it mounted on a tripod here. It just makes it easy for me. A common thing that I do when I'm shooting a lot of my videos is you'll see that I have a bracket here, a GoPro bracket. I can put a, uh, a mount. I can put a GoPro, usually that one there. I put my GoPro here, and the microphones are just behind it, so they get a pretty accurate uh, rendition or, or representation of what the GoPro should be getting. If you were, if the GoPro was your eyes, then these would be your ears. Not too far off, not perfect, but not too far off. And since the GoPro is so small, it really doesn't cast much of an acoustical shadow around its body. It's so small. These things are picking up in an XY fashion. And let's get in here and look. So if you imagine my GoPro sitting here, whenever I have this tilted forward like I normally use it, the GoPro would be sitting here, you know, not even as big as my fist. So it hears sound around it. So, this is my down and dirty runaround rig. I use these microphones with a GoPro here. I can go out, shoot a pretty decent quality video, get up close, and get really good audio as well. Um, all else, you know, no background noise, all that other stuff taken into consideration. The actual recording is pretty decent, uh, as long as I don't touch this. Now, if I use this, it will get uh, very noisy. So what I'm going to do is switch back to the onboard microphones of the Zoom. And this is what it sounds like. Really noisy. So I'm going to go back to my microphones here. My stereo pair. Uh, which should be getting a better sound because they're a little bit closer to the sound source. Uh, and they're just a higher quality of microphone and a little more directional than the GoPro built-in microphone. So uh, now I can be recording my audio with a rig that is sitting pretty much off stage. And here I am on stage getting audio feed, uh, arguably better than the GoPro. And now I can be shooting without having the actual recorder in the mix or in the, in the video shot. Uh, and now I have two GoPros going. Again, let me show you what my current configuration is. Go. This is why it's called the handheld. So that is the view from where I am. You can see I've got my umbrella here, my umbrella here, and I have a light source here. I just had an extra light that came with my package, so I set it in front of. Uh, this was a camera dolly that was uh, given to me. I have two more over there with the old cameras, but it has a nice white surface on it, so it reflects light, so hopefully that will cut down a lot of the shadowing. Now, What I've also done, as we've noticed, I've, uh, my videos till now have been me up here with my khaki pants on and my green vest and it, and it looks terrible. So I wore these colors today to see how they're gonna turn out. So I'm only speculating that it's a lot clearer that you're not seeing a green haze as much anyhow. Uh, as, as I get better at dialing it in and get the lighting better, it should get easier and easier. 
when I get a nice strong contrast between the green of the green screen, the chroma key, and the other colors which hopefully don't have any green in them or as minimal, uh, as little as possible. So I'm going to get rid of this over shirt and we should be able to get a nice solid contrast. Now, it's easy to forget and use the term chroma key and green screen interchangeably, but they are distinctly two different things because you could make this color of my shirt the chroma key and now the green screen is seen and it's just a green thing. But if we go back, uh, the green screen becomes the chroma key. Now this is a regular, uh, looks normal. So this is the test. And now we have some video to play with, some audio to play with, and a little bit of other video capture to play with and try to get it all lined up together. And how do we do that? Normally, I start off every video with this. That gives me an audio spike that I can see in the waveform view or I can simply listen for or watch for. I can listen for this and look through the camera at this. This is why I have to make sure that I do it in front of all the cameras. I could walk over here. It does no good. Or if I do this, this camera doesn't see it. So I try to get somewhere where all cameras can see. So I have my alignment, my clapper board which is what you see in movies when they're going, take three, action. So this is the poor man's version. A percussive sound with a distinct spike in the audio that is very easily seen, the visual aspect of making contact. If I made my clap like that, terrible. So something to think about. And as with most things, you forget to do it once, you really start to remember these things. It's uh, most important with percussion and similar things. Guitar, you have a little bit of play because there's not a specific strike zone. You've got a little fudge room. Also, you have a little bit of play with how far you can get your vocal track off with the video. So I'm going to do a little bit right now and it's not that off-putting until you suddenly get too far off and it's just very hard to watch and listen and it's distracting. So anyhow, uh, I think that will be a good long enough for this video session.